Welcome to the fourth video on object-oriented programming in Python. We learned that objects can be created from a class and each such object or instance will have its own dictionary where we can store attributes specific to that object. We also saw what bound methods are. In this example, there is a set name method under my class. This method prints the value of self and then sets an attribute on the object. Remember that self is the reference to the object from which this method will be called. Next, we create object1 using this class. This creates an object somewhere in the heap memory. Dunder dict attribute of this object will be pointing to its instance dictionary. Since we store the return value of calling my class in the obj1 variable, it will be a reference to this object. Next, we call the setName method using this newly created object. Now the value of self inside the setName method will be another reference to this object. An attribute is set on an object using this dot notation, it will be stored in that object's dictionary. Within the instance's dictionary, the string representation of attribute name will be used as the key and value will be whatever value we set. You can confirm this by checking the contents of instance dictionary using the dunder dict attribute. If we create a second object using the same class and call the setName method on it, everything works the same as what we just saw, except that the self will be the new object too and the values will be set in its instance dictionary. The attributes specific to each instance are stored in their own independent instance dictionaries. Next, let's get into the topic of this video the dunder init method. Notice that the function is written as double underscore init double underscore. Python community pronounces it as dunder init. In general, such methods are called dunder methods or special methods. We will make a separate video on other special methods in the future. Except for the double underscores, there is nothing special about it in terms of the syntax. Within its body, we simply print the value of self. Now, let's create an instance of this class. Notice that simply creating the instance itself caused the body of the dunder init to execute. The purpose of dunder init is to initialize an object. For example, imagine that we want to write a class to represent a person. Each person object should have its own name and age properties. We want to set these properties at the time of object creation itself. This can be done in the body of the dunder init method. Notice that now Python says we need to pass my underscore name and my underscore age arguments when creating instances using the person class. Python will pass them to the dunder init function. Within the body of dunder init, we can set them as attributes on the object using self. If you check the object's dictionary, you will see both attributes. You may have other code in the body of dunder init, for example, to validate the age argument and raise an exception if it's not a positive integer. One important thing to understand is that dunder init is an initializer, not a constructor. That is, dunder init doesn't create the object, it only initializes the object. Initializing an object means populating its instance dictionary. Notice that the first argument to dunder init is self, which means, by the time Python calls dunder init, Python has already created an object of person class, and self is a reference to that object for dunder init to modify. The only difference with the regular method is that Python calls it automatically when we try to create an instance of the person class.